goal this year not to lose any of her babies to to leopards and lions. You can see all four little guys, uh, no five, with another female there. And this looks like they're home. There's a hole there, so they've just popped out to see the one female to the right. It is actually at the entrance to the borough. So how many baby water have we got there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So four and three, if I remember correctly. Morning, Piggles. We've got Mount, Wo uh, Mount Mongoose at Juma, and looks like we've got Mount Warthog here on Arethusa. one halfway up using her nose to dig down into the grass. She's after the um, rhizomes, a really nutritious part and bulbs in the grass. So they all she dig through uh, to find that. Andrew, can you actually hear them? Yes. So I'm going to keep quiet for a few seconds, guys. And you can actually hear them feeding. in one warthog burrow. Nice and warm, I'm sure, all of them together. So who can remember how to tell the difference between a male and a female warthog? Uh, so who can remember how to tell the difference between a male and a female warthog? Um, you can Send your answers to questions at wildearth.tv or use the hashtag Safari Live on Twitter. Oh, she's getting a little bit upset with the others trying to get into her feeding spot. Oh, there we go. A little headbutt. Must be a very vigilant pair of mothers, yeah, to be able to have kept this many of the, the babies alive in such a predator-rich area. And there's not much more a leopard likes than a baby warthog. And lions, for that matter. have so many babies that start, need to feed and they start whining under the ground. If we have a look at the warthog, those top tusks are, are always the quite impressive ones, but the ones that they actually use more for defense, if we have a look there, is the bottom tush. Um, it's actually so sharp. So I've, had, I've seen warthog tusks, those bottom tusks, that are almost like a razor blade. Um, and when you see injuries on, on lion and leopard that have tried to take warthog, it's quite often not from the big visible tusk, but from that bottom tush that's almost sharpened. Uh, as, as with the movement of the way the warthogs feed. So it's a really, 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 really sharp, and that's what often does the damage um, when they're defending themselves against predators. There you can see, even though it's quite small, it's very, very sharp.
And I've seen Warthog females vigorous, vigorously defend their young against leopards, actually physically chasing leopards. And I've seen big male Warthog chase a pack of 16 wild dog. It's quite incredible um, an animal like that can sometimes install fear uh, in, in, in an animal like a leopard or a lion. I've even seen Warthogs chase lions for that matter. But generally, an adult male warthog is only the domain with the leopards of a big male leopard, or quite often a very silly young male leopard. Um, I'm afraid again today we're going to be on a bit of a Ferrari safari so hold on I've just got a really amazing update from Scotty so we're going to try get there as soon as possible I'm not going to guarantee anything because it is on another boundary we seem to be hugging boundaries today so hold on and off we go
like to know why do the water, so many of the water dogs feed on their knees. That's, that's so they can get right down there and use their nose to dig up to get those little bulbs and other things uh, from at the grass. So we're just going to have a quick good morning to Dougie Boy. and the three cubs and there's Scotty in the background okay we're gonna go get a bit closer now 
But I just wanted to give you that first little glimpse through the bushes. Isn't this wonderful? And there's a Matimba male. It's all happening here at Twin Depths. So these guys, if I remember correctly, are probably just under three months now. Um, and it is incredible. This is the first time that we've known that they've crossed into into our, our Travis area. Oh, look at them. Little monsters. Make sure Ephraim's not right behind us. So, really, really wonderful morning. I mean, I was really happy with that brief visual to Ghana, but this is incredible. What do you have? to be scared and you, as you can see the mothers completely ignore the vehicle so the cubs even from this age will generally take the cue from mom so this is the first time we've seen these little guys sorry my camera is going clickety 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 but I just can't help myself this morning 
So those little cubs are less than three foot from the vehicle. Isn't that incredible? They're going to run past us now. Isn't this amazing, guys? And even better, they're heading deeper and deeper into Juma. Isn't that sound awesome? sure which is the mother. I actually haven't been looking at which one's got um, suckle marks. I've been so excited just looking at the, at the cubs. I will try to figure out which one it is now. It looks, it's the female at the back is the mother. Go ahead. They're heading straight towards um, uh, just the treehouse dam, or actually Weaver's Nets Junction with um, uh, sort of elephant skull, uh, elephant skull. So you guys see the... Isn't that amazing, guys? Isn't that unbelievably special? So they've just stopped for a little rest. Um, it's quite a long walk from what I heard but for the little guys that they've done this morning. But aren't they just the cutest? I think she might have seen something. There's some impala off to our left. And she spotted them. I think it's an impala or a nyala. I can't really see through the bush. Impala.
Andrew's cleaning the lens there. Um, it is a very misty morning, so there's condensation build up on the on the lens. I'm just gonna stop here. Um, so she's seen these impala. I'm just trying to get in a good position where I can see the her and the impala. It'll be interesting to see if the cubs keep following even while she's stalking, which it looks like they are. And whether she gives them the reprimand to stay behind. So those impala are probably about 70 meters from us now. So we'll let you call going shopping with the kids in tow. hasn't moved. You can see she's going into that sort of hunt mode now. Really going into stalking behavior. She'll probably move a bit quicker to try and get rid of the children. Head. Head. I don't think he spotted the Impala. So it's a possibility that they might disrupt the hunt, these little guys making their little contact calls and stuff, and might let the Impala know that she's here. But she's dropped into the drainage line. I'm just going to move carefully around the edge here. Make sure I'm not going to reverse into Ephraim. is behind me. seen the one that's coming around to the north of us and you can hear that very distinct impala alarm call but they're definitely alarming i think it's at actually i can see now it's the the matimba male walking it just moved and they're alarming at that male but they definitely haven't seen the lioness who's off to our our right in this area somewhere. So we are just going to stand by here. I don't want to move um, to interfere. Hi, Nancy from Minneapolis. Nancy would like to know, what do they do with the cubs while they're hunting? Nancy, um, they'll often leave the cubs and they'll actually leave the cubs in a drainage line or thicket for up to two or three days at some times while they go out hunting. I can... The other lioness is contact calling for the behind us and that's the line that these impala are seeing. I think it's worth just sitting here for a minute or two longer. Ah, there we go. I think you've... So this is the mother. You can actually see the sucker marks quite nicely uh, when we have a look and she's got enlarged teats. But she's now sort of made a hash of the hunt and walked straight up to the impala. And here the little cubs actually... 
shouting away. And now she's contact calling them. Let's just get in the position. So, hang, hands over. started alarming again that means the male's probably on his way and here he comes where's he coming friend um he's still a long way off i'll let you know when he comes so we can get a visual okay it's just in front of it from his vehicle now but he should come walk right in front of us. Okay. safari brenda uh, brenda would like to know that when the mother goes off hunting why doesn't she leave the cubs with the auntie well brenda lions have a much better success rate than if they're hunting with more than one so she does that to increase the chances of success when it comes to um catching an animal and obviously that both uh, the mother needs to eat to provide milk for these little guys because they are far too young to be eating meat just yet.
Hi, Jan. And welcome on the Sunrise Safari. Um, Jan would like to know, would hyenas kill a lion cub like they would a leopard cub? Uh, most definitely, Jan. Um, if their hyenas came across these little guys unattended while the females were out hunting, they would most definitely kill them. Um, it happens quite often. Leopard would also kill these cubs. Um, but with a, a male lion here, I'm trying to see he's still on his way, I think, or he's laid down a little bit further from us. Um, with a male lion here, um, there's very little chance of anything apart from another group of male lions coming in and threatening these little guys. Unfortunately, with the way they're lying at the moment, we can't see the suckle marks, but hopefully um, they might start feeding. Oh, the little guys did look quite full. Michelle would like to know, do I know what sex the cubs are? Michelle, not yet. Uh, I can't see. And they're a bit young uh, to determine just yet. Oh, look at that. Isn't that sweet? Nothing like a sibling f for a pillow. I don't know if you guys heard that. There was a little growl from the lioness. Enough guys, stop it now. It's sleeping time. Scott. Either they're static at the moment. So we've got a question. Oh, there we go. It looks like might be looking for a teat. There we go. Now it's going to be quite funny. Sometimes when one of the cubs sees the other feeding, yes, there we go, on cue. It's like, no, 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 you can't have it. I want to get in there. So, and they can get quite aggressive with each other, even at this age. And we all know how aggressive they can be around a kill. There we go. There we go. Oh, motherhood. Now, and then the third one. No, no, this can't be. I also want some. Remain in Virginia. Uh, Remain in Virginia would like to know when I said a lion den site, is that an actual den like the hyenas and wild dogs have, or is it uh, 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 just a spot where they hide the cubs? Remain, a lion den site can literally be almost anything.
a thicket. Oh, she's heard something. So with those impala alarming quite quite loudly earlier, there's a strong possibility if there's hyenas in the area, they might come to investigate. But if you're a hyena wandering into here at the moment, it's not a good spot for you to be with a male lion around. So hyenas, if in a big group, will quite often harass lionesses, but it's amazing. As soon as you add a male lion to the picture, the hyenas lose a lot of their bravery. would definitely be protective um, not necessarily over the cubs but they just don't like hyenas in general um, and they would definitely chase the hyena if given the opportunity to um, I used to see a male lion in northern Botswana I don't know, maybe when he was a cub he had an extremely bad hyena experience but he's the only male lion I've seen that used to actively seek out and hunt and kill hyenas he would see a hyena from 800 meters and that was it, stalk mode and he would charge in there and Often, the way you used to kill them was bite the middle of their backs and leave them half alive while they squealed. But he was he just had a really, really big aversion to, to hyenas. And one morning around, around the camp, we found six hyena carcasses from him. Just ran around chomping hyenas. Didn't ever feed on them, just killing them. But it looks like whatever it was, false alarm. Everyone's relaxed again. Isn't this incredible being able to sit here and see a bit of sort of the secret lives of these big cats? I mean, we are sitting within probably 10 foot of uh, a li two lioness, one who's got three tiny cubs around three months old now, um, and they're all suckling quite peacefully for lion cubs I might add uh, for now seems like they've each got a teat but sometimes they start fighting over the one that the other has um, so there's been a few questions about lion litter size and we actually had quite a long discussion about this a few drives ago um, and it turns out that there was a world record litter born recently in Zimbabwe but it doesn't really count because it's to a captive uh, lioness who was on birth control so very strange so that can really um, play with an animal's hormones um, so there were eight cubs born to that lioness in Zimbabwe in a, in a captive in a captive environment um, and as far as in my research the, the largest litter recorded in the wild was six um, and that was from Nairobi National Park just outside Nairobi in Kenya and that was to a wild a wild lioness so as far as I know that is the largest litter um, and there has been a question on mortality rates I'm afraid sorry I'm so excited I can't remember everyone's name as it's been coming in while I've been moving um, and sorry I just need to turn down the radio a bit the game drive radio it was I think Elizabeth who asked about the cub litter sizes and mortality rates um, Elizabeth mortality rates depend quite a lot on areas um, and um, in this area, as far as I know, lions are sitting with cubs at a, a mortality rate of around 80%. And because it's such a predator-rich environment, and there's lots of different lion prides and lots of leopards and lots of hyenas, um, the, the lion mortality rate is quite high in this area. But it obviously varies from different parts of the world. Um, and obviously where you have density, high densities of other predators um, or lack of other predators, you probably find the two biggest killers of lion cubs outside of male lions um, are hyena and leopard. You find them when they've been left while the mothers head off hunting. Um, and the reason that they, they do kill them is basically it's, it's 
competition killing bears to remove the other predators that are competing for the same resources as them. Jane from Colorado. Jane would like to know if the Nkahuma pride females came across these cubs, what would they do? I'm afraid, Jane, they would kill them immediately. Um, this is a small pride now, and it's now with an added three animals. It's going to start becoming a bigger pride, and they, their territories do overlap slightly. So if the Nkahumas were to come across these cubs, they would most definitely kill them to remove the competition. Lynn from Toronto. Lynn would like to know how could she defend against a predator? How could she pick up and carry three cubs to safety if there were hyenas right there? Lynn, um, with lions in that situation, I think they would take offense as the best form of defense and they would try to chase and attack the hyena. Obviously, it depends on how many hyenas and whatnot and whether the male is present. At the moment, with a male lion present here, the only real threat to these cubs would be. Um, other lions um, and more in particular even the Nkuma pride because you must remember that the Matimba male the Matimba males uh, dominate over both the sticks and the Nkuma prides so even though the lionesses uh, would fight amongst each other if the, ma the males are related to both prides it would be actually a very interesting scenario to see, um, just to see what would happen. But um, the only real threat, uh, really, really big threat, would be other male lions, something like the Birmingham boys, that five young males who are starting to get old enough to think about uh, challenging for territory, all those two young sticks males. Because there's only one Matimba here, and two male, uh, young male lions coming into their prime could be quite uh, a threat to these cubs. exact figure for uh, this part of the world. Um, litter averages for the low fault in South Africa average 2.6 lions per litter. So when the cubs are born, they only weigh 1.5 kilograms. Here we go with maths again, just to test me. Um, uh, let me just remember, the best way for me to work out maths with pounds and kilograms is from fishing, because <laughs> for some reason we still measure fish in pounds. So, um, four and a half kgs is 10 pounds. <laughs> around three pounds uh, just yeah just over three pounds at at birth Hi, Anna Marie. Um, welcome on the Sunrise Fire. Isn't this a spectacular 
drive we're having this morning. Anna Marie would like to know would two females be nursing um, these particular cubs? Anna Marie, in this situation, only the mother is nursing. Um, if the other lioness had cubs, um, it would be possible that they, they do nurse um, cubs that are not their own but from the same pride. But in this situation now, um, only the, the mother is nursing. So they've all gone into sort of a really quiet space now. Um, it is possible that they might get up and move or that Matimba, who is very lazy, is flopped down somewhere over here, might move in closer. We can't see him from where he is. Um, so, oh, there we go. As I said, on cue. Thank you, madam. No, just changing spots. are getting ready for Jamie. Um, she's going to be taking over from me in about 25 minutes. So, lucky for her, we're not going to meander too far from these lines. I think we'll, in a few, uh, just now we'll pop out to do the swap out safely away from where the lines are. And then I'm pretty sure we're going to come straight back here to the cubs. But then I'm not in charge anymore. It's up to Jamie. So we'll see what she decides to do. Got him now. He's walking along on the boundary. He's a part. Yeah, no, I'm not going to go. Now we're going to go this too fast. But my new lady in the crew, there's a man. Isn't that just sort of the Nearly the picture of? It's a part of it. Trying to think of the right <laughs> word now. Very peaceful picture. I'm going to try and get the mail quick. Okay. Andrew thinks he can spot them. And Timba, he's a bit higher than me, so I can't see from where I am. He's just going to swing around and try and have a look where it is quickly so you guys know where he is in relation to where we are. So I'll be joining you, watching my monitor to try and find the lion. Oh, there we go. Flat cat. So not the best sighting of a male lion we've ever had. It just gives you an idea where he is in relation to where we are. Sunrise Safari Blair. Blair would like to know why the Matimba male hasn't come up and joined them. Uh, possibly because he's a bit lazy and sometimes the male lions tend to stay a little bit further away when their cubs are on because the cubs tend to like to climb and play on things and they can get a bit grumpy with that. My first sighting of cubs since I've been with Wild Earth. So I'm on top of the moon, or as James would say, smiling like a Cheshire cat. Hi, Rena. Uh, welcome on the sunrise safari. Um, Rena would like to know. Um, how far can a lioness travel with cubs in a day? Um, at this age, you know, I doubt they'll travel more than a couple of kilometers. As they get older, obviously, then they will travel further. But at this age, I'd probably say the max they might travel in a day is three or four kilometers. And please don't ask me to convert that into miles. So 
while these guys are quite peaceful, why don't you guys let me know whether you want to go have a closer look at the male line um, or you want to stay here. So you guys tell me what you would like to do. Do that by sending an email to questions at wildearth.tv or use the hashtag Safari Live if you're on Twitter. Um, also, if anyone is new, we are live. You are seeing two, at the moment, two cubs suckling off a lioness in the Sabi Sands Game Reserve in South Africa, particularly on Juma Private Game Reserve. And you are live, and we are interactive. So if you are new, you can ask me questions about what we're seeing. And you can do that by emailing questions at wildearth.tv or use the hashtag Safari Live on Twitter. Hi, Rome. Um, Rome would like to know. Why is the other female not pregnant, or does she have cubs that are not here? Well, Rume, um, she has been seen mating. Um, it's possible that she just hasn't uh, conceived yet. And we have watched those male lions following her around quite closely. I haven't seen any mating yet, but I've heard from the guys to the south of us that she has been mating. So it is possible she could be pregnant already, or she hasn't conceived. Um, generally, actually, I got I actually read a little interesting stat on that a bit earlier. The male lion. Um, where was it? Here we go. In majority of matings do not result in pregnancy um, 14 mating periods observed in the wild only four appeared to result in an in actual conception so there we go um, lions do breed quite quickly so it could be a mechanism to control their population naturally so very interesting but i'm quite sure she will be trying to have cubs if she's not pregnant still waiting to hear whether you want to go have a quick closer look at the male line and then come back to the little guys so i've just heard stay 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 so we'll stay right here don't worry yes <coughs> so quite interesting i've been having a look in my big book and there's some interesting little facts on lion estrus and that. Um, and also litter sizes. 
uh, so the level of nutrition of the female influences her fertility. So if she's not in good condition um, or struggling a little bit, it's unlikely that she will give birth or conceive during that time. So it seems only that the, the, the females that are in good condition give birth. <laughs> and also litter numbers are regulated by the amount of food available. So obviously you can see three is a nice number. So there's obviously enough food around for these guys. Now I'm starting to lose a few layers. It's getting a bit warmer. And he was following them. Yeah. Oh, there we go. A little bit of movement still. One thirsty with one. The way the one can see how Susanna. Uh, Susanna is just saying that none of the three look like runts. They all look the same size. They do, Susanna. There doesn't seem to be a marked difference in size um, between any of them. So that means probably that there's enough milk, so the females in very condition, uh, good condition. There's enough milk. They don't have to fight um, over milk, uh, which in that case, you would see the more aggressive individual become bigger, uh, even at this young age. But so it looks like things are hunky dory for the Stix girls at the moment. <laughs> so guys we're going to sit here for a few more minutes and then we're going to get out and unleash Jamie on the vehicle um, so what we are going to do is when we do come back we'll probably try getting at a different angle where we can possibly see something a bit more than where we are now but I'm not going to move just yet and also there are some other game drives that are working their way here so when we leave um, for Jamie we're going to do a quick loop around before we come back to the Lions so um, they're not going anywhere at the moment so I'm sure they're not going to move so we'll Jamie's going to take you on a little bumble around um, before coming back to the lions, who are very flat cats at the moment, but they are so adorable. So I'm going to start slowly moving. Oh, has he popped his head up? He has too. So I'm going to start slowly moving to a place where it's safe um, for Jamie and I to swap. And um, we'll have a look at that male lion. His head's up on the way out.
Move coming. If I'm just going to move out for a few minutes, but we'll booyah just now. So hasn't this been incredible and exciting? So I'm going to let the engine run for a few seconds. It's not to startle again. Go, just let it run. Little head up there. So let the engine run so they get used to it. So when they're older, they have it. Little or no reaction. So I'm just going to start moving backwards very slowly as they tuck in. out of 24 hours.
more civilized looking way than driving through the thicket. see you again on the sunset safari so have a fantastic time with jamie for this last hour and we'll see you later Here we go. move all my paraphernalia well good luck jamie thank you like to introduce myself. I'm Jamie and as Brent has already told you, I'm here to do my interview drive. I'm hoping to join the Wild Earth team. I don't have the same level of experience as some of the other presenters, but I'm hoping to bring something fresh and new and hopefully to learn from some of these amazing guys because they, it's been an incredible morning so far. I've really enjoyed myself. Um, spectacular sighting of the leopard, Tangata. A uh, nice big dominant male, and then a sort of very rapid drive to see the Stig Pride, which was an also a very special sighting with a very serene family scene with nice new cubs. So we're just going to make our way around a little bit, but before we do that, I just want to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I was born in Johannesburg, and 
I grew up visiting the bush and loving the bush, and it is my passion and my life. I spent three years in the UK at university, studied law, decided it really wasn't for me, and that I wanted to come back and enjoy the bush again. So I hope you enjoy having me. Please be kind to me, guys. I'm new. Don't know the roads, don't know the reserve, don't know the animals, but hopefully I can give you a good drive. Okay, let's hit the road and see what we can find. I think what we're going to do is slowly make our way around. Oh, we've got a nice herd of zebra coming down to drink. which you'll often see with animals what you'll often see with animals coming down to drink is they can actually take a very long time in approaching a dam and that's for a very clear reason um, they need to make sure that there's no predators about as you saw when we first approached that lion pride they were also hanging out around the dam waiting to see what was coming down to drink so you'll see that they approach very, very cautiously, often using as much cover as possible and walking into the wind so they can smell what's around them. Yeah, we've got a nice brave starter. What they'll also do is be very cautious when they approach, just in case there's a crocodile lurking in the depths of the water. to the herd is feeling a little bit cautious but we've got two brave drinkers like this the family structure would usually be the dominant stallion and his group of mares that he's selected so when a young stallion is starting out in life and he wants to collect his females he'll go and fight another stallion and if that stallion loses then they'll pass on either the daughter or his least favorite mare and I read a very interesting article recently that the females obviously have a hierarchy so the newest female will be the one that is lowest ranking in the herd and often the existing females when a new female can, comes into the herd can be very unfriendly and antisocial for a while and that female must walk at the back and learn to learn her place until she's accepted by the herd and often when you see zebras with stumpy tails missing tails that I always used to think when I was a child that that was from a sort of surviving zebra that had escaped from a lion or a hyena hunt but actually typically that's that comes from the zebras biting each other especially when they fight their main form of offense is a combination of teeth and kicking and they have some very impressive incisors that they use to bite are new to me um, I want to test a little bit on your knowledge from some of the existing viewers please can you ask answer this question for me how do you tell the difference between a male and a female zebra okay, it's one of the more tricky ones to do and you can send through your answers either on questions at wildearth.tv or tweet us in hashtag safari live
Eliza. make our way back towards the lovely pride of lions that we had earlier. This is actually my first time on Sabi Sands. Um, the reserve I work at is not that far away. It's probably about two hours drive, but much closer in a straight line. And it's amazing. It's one of these incredible privileges of being a guide and doing that we do is that you get to see so many incredible places and experience such different things. Just looking now, this reserve is much more open than our reserve, than I'm, the reserve that I'm currently working at. And that's actually because the reserve I'm currently at has only just become a reserve in the last 20 or so years. So it's, it's been overgrazed. The environment is, is very, very different, and they have to refer they have to help the land recover from the damage that was done by the farming. So it's very interesting to experience different places and see different trees. And it's amazing to see how even familiar trees to be the same species, they actually look totally different. They have totally different growth forms. And obviously that's to do with the soil and the climate and everything like that, the level of rainfall. Um, it's always impressive to see how everything's connected and ties in together. It's one of my favorite things about experiencing new places. And I've been very fortunate to have traveled quite extensively in South Africa. But to me, there's nothing like a low point. 